PyWWT is a Python package that makes it easy to use World Wide Test Scope from Python. There are multiple ways to use PyWWT. So one way is to use it from IPython. Um, and to do this, we use a standalone widget called WWT Qt Client. So we create an instance of WWT Qt Client, and this will open up a new window, which contains a full version of World Wide Test Scope. This window is fully interactive and it's possible to pan around as well as zoom in and out. It's possible to then modify settings of World Water Scope via the IPython console. So for example, here we set the galactic mode to true, which lines up the view with the galactic plane. And we can turn this off again. Now, World Wide Test Scope includes many layers of imagery, and we can see what surveys can be shown by typing wwt.available underscore layers. We can then set the foreground imagery to be, for example, the two mass survey. World Wide Test Scope also makes it possible to have a background layer and then to transition between the foreground and the background. So in this case, we're going to set the background to the hydrogen alpha full survey sky map. We can then set the opacity to, for example, 0.5 to have a blend of the two, zero to see just the background, or one to see just the foreground. There are other settings available to modify the view. So for example, we can turn on the boundaries of constellations. And we can also set the color of the constellation boundaries, for example, in this case, to yellow. It's possible, in addition to modifying the view, to actually add annotations uh, to World Wide Telescope. So PyWWT integrates well with AstroPy, uh, and so we import the SkyCord AstroPy class, which allows us to define celestial coordinates and the AstroPy units package. And then we can then find out the coordinates of M16. Uh, SkyCord has a nice uh, method called fromName, which makes it easy to get this. And then we can do wwt.addCircleM16, uh, and then store that the result of that in a, a separate variable called circle. Now you see that uh, a new circle has appeared in the viewer. We can then change the radius, for example, um, by specifying it either in degrees or in pixels or other units of angle. We can use a method called center on coordinates, which allows us to change the view, the current view of World War Telescope and set the field of view to two degrees. And we can see a circle on top of the M16 nebula. We can then set the properties of the circle further. For example, we can make it a filled circle. We can change the color of the fill uh, to blue. We can also change the transparency of the fill color uh, by using the dot opacity property. And we can change the color of the edge of the circle. So this can be used to show a number of objects in the field of view. It's also possible to show, for example, polygons and lines. Once you're happy with the view in the World Wide Telescope, it's possible to save this to a static file using the render method. So in this case, we do wwt.render and then give the file name of the file we want to create. And once this has been done, we can check by opening that file. And indeed, we see that this looks like the widget view. Now it's also possible, in, in, instead of using PyWWT interactively, we can also write a script. In this case, we have a script that will load a catalog of spitz observations and will overlay these as polygons on the image. It will set the properties of uh, the polygons uh, depending on the instrument used, so the color indicates which instrument was used, um, and then uh, will overlay on these regions. And it will also uh, center on the object. So it's possible to set up workflows like this um, where the script will basically show uh, a number of objects and send on a view. Now it's also possible to use PyWWT in Jupyter Notebooks. So this is a notebook that's running on Azure Notebooks. And uh, here, instead of importing the Qt class, we import WWT Jupyter widget and then create an instance of that class. 
and then the WWT is required to actually show the widget. And you can see that the World Wide Telescope view now appears inside the notebook, not in a separate window. And again, it's fully interactive and you can pan around and zoom in and out. And then the this example here basically just does something similar to what we did just now. It will show a circle at the position of M17 and center the view on M17. So this is just to show that you can do the same kind of things that you would do uh, with, the, with the standalone widget. Uh, and this should work inside the notebook.